Hi, thank you for joining us. My name is Lisa and I'm one of the codependent knitters and this is my friend Dawn, yeah. the other codependent knitter. Yeah. We are trying something new today. We are trying just knit with us. So kind of like a virtual um, knit night, virtual knitting party. So it's not our typical podcast. We aren't going to be showing FOs and whips and all that good stuff. Uh, we're just going to be knitting and um, having conversation. So if this isn't um, what you were looking for and you'd rather just wait for a regular podcast, then that's fine. But we just want you to know that that's what you're going to get today. Do you want to talk about the... Yeah, so for today, to uh, give us something to talk about, we have a list of questions that Dawn from um, Crafty Mama Designs, uh, she received them from another podcaster and tagged some podcasters to answer them and we were one of the groups that she tagged. So she sent us the questions a while back and uh, we thought we would read the question aloud and then answer it. So, um, well, we could quickly talk about what we are knitting since yes, we are knitting. That. What yeah. are you knitting? I am knitting a boxy in the fingering weight for my mother. Okay, how are you doing? You got past the the band, the ribbon? I got by, or the... past the, I, I didn't do ribbing. I'm doing a garter stitch. I know you can't see it, but it's yeah. garter stitch instead of ribbing because when you do see the boxy, it looks like there's got, there's quite a bit of garter stitch up here, and I like the way it kind of so ties together. That. So yeah. And you're using Regia sock yarn. Awesome. It's nice. It's super wash. So that's the regular good. boxy, the fingering weight by yes. Hohi Locatelli. Yes. Okay. And I'm knitting the knit sister tube scarf, um, and it's just that's random beautiful. stripes of different colors of yarn. So you can use up your um, leftover sock and fingering yarn, or you could knit it in a different weight if you want. Um, Lisa's also knitting this, this, it's a knit along with the Fiber Friends podcast. Um, but she is going to do hers in more big blocks because she already has a similar striping scarf. So I'm going to just randomly change colors. So, um, again, we are trying to do minimal editing on this, yes. um, on this episode. And so, so we won't see all of our flaws. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> unless like the phone rings or something, I'll cut that out, but we won't be putting text up on the screen. Um, unless there's something we have to correct that we need a glaring error. Um, so yeah, we're not going to talk about all the other usual business. Today's just virtual knitting with that all explained. Then let's commence the questions so oh, you can see them. Hold so on, I dropped the switch. Just, just to... oh. quick fix. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, how and when did you learn to knit? Do you want me to go first? You go first, girlfriend. I probably first learned when I was a kid. Um, my mom taught me when I was little. So I, you know, I would have learned how to knit a scarf or whatever, or a little blanket for my Barbies. And then I didn't knit for probably like through my preteen teen years. Um, but I did crochet. And so I went through a big crochet spell where, um, and, you know, in my early 20s, my friends were all getting married and uh, starting to have families. So I crocheted a lot of baby blankets. And I still did some knitting. I mostly knit mitts because my mom yes. taught me to knit mitts on double points. And uh, I still have her pattern and, you know, basic mitt pattern with a gusset thumb. And yeah, so that's when I learned to knit. How about you? Again, learned as a kid made a blanket, taught the stitch, and then I didn't really knit until I was more of a teenager. My mom used to make all the Norwegian sweaters with the colors here. Mm -hmm. So she'd have me knit from the slit, the cuff up and the waist up, and it was easy. I mean, it was just knit, knit, knit. And so she probably, did the color work. Yeah, that's probably where I got my uh, love for knitting in the round, because that's pretty much all I do. Those are all done in the round. Yeah, yeah. so okay. we, I think that year, our whole family got them. <laughs> Anybody that we knew. <laughs> yeah, I had, I remember my mom made me one of those yep. in high school. It was yeah. gorgeous because I think it was gray with then like grays and blacks and white. Oh, it was beautiful. Nice. I don't know. It probably nice. went in a yard sale. Ours was uh, <laughs> dark green, navy, and cream. Nice. Yeah. Okay, next question. Oh, this one's easy. What is your favorite cast on method? You go first. What's yours? I used to use the thumb method until I took a Latvian class after I'd been knitting for years. And I actually learned how to do long tail cast on because that's what I thought I was doing, but I wasn't. So my favorite cast on is the long tail method. I've never heard of the thumb cast on. It's, yeah. I can't do even you use your thumb to, to put every stitch yeah. on? Okay. 
Yeah. I mean, I use my thumb just to make the slip knot at first. Right? Yeah. But. So it's similar to making a, anyways, okay. that's the way my mom taught me and I don't even think she can remember how to do it. Okay. Uh, I always did just a knitted cast on because mm -hmm. that's what I learned first. And then probably a couple years ago, I learned long tail. Yeah. And um, probably the most I use is the twisted, the German twisted oh, okay. cast on, mm -hmm. which is like the long tail with just a couple extra little twists. So mm -hmm. it's even more stretchy. So because oh, okay. I do like with the hats and the socks and things like that, mm -hmm. um, if it was like uh, a shawl, um, then I would probably do... Well, it depends how the shawl starts, so I don't, that's not fair to say for a shawl. But yeah, long tail or twisted German cast on would be my two most commonly used ones. What is your favorite type of knitting or design element? My favorite type of knitting, cause my favorite is stocking stitch <laughs> <laughs> because you can just go, go, go and you can, you know, usually work without a pattern. Yep. Um, so it's very portable and a lot easier to do with conversation. This is true. <laughs> this is so I've had true. even simple patterns recently, like at knit night, and I, I still, yeah, I can come home and have to redo a couple rows because I mess it up. So you kind of have to have a knit night project yeah. that you can do. But for chatting. design element, I love cables. I love the look of them. Mm -hmm. um, they are, if you haven't tried cables yet, they're really not as complex as they look. And when someone shows you how easy they are, you're just taking stitches, and switching them and that's basically it so yeah. once you get the hang of it I mean they, they can be easy to mess up but in terms of the mechanics and the I technical doing it they're very easy I think it's also hard to fix yeah that's a little bit where yeah. people might yeah. get intimidated but you can always use your lifeline it yeah. can help you through anything yeah um, and my your favorite? favorite is I don't sew so I like knitting in the round or mm -hmm. seamless because I, I some designers when they say seamless it's kind of interesting the way they do it so I like that type mm -hmm. of thing as long as I don't have to sew I'm willing to try almost okay. anything okay mm -hmm. and you tend to do more um you don't do like heavy heavy cabled heavy complex no. design you like more I like, I like very more simple. simple straightforward yeah, very design. okay yeah. next question um, what is your favorite project you ever knit do you know an answer? I have to think. I think one of my favorites has to be my fiddlehead mittens. Yeah, I choice. love my fiddlehead mittens. And I love wearing them. And I love how warm they are. And I love looking down at them and going, they're so pretty. They are. <laughs> okay, that's a good pick. But that's And then my striped scarf. But my striped scarf is just, it makes me happy. It's it's happy, happy scarf. Yeah. So, I, I have a lot of shawls that I love. I really love the close to you shawl that I did um, last summer or last summer mm -hmm. fall. Um, it's just so pretty and it was actually quite easy Which and one quick. Was that one? Justine Lorakowska, the one I did in the Malabrigo anniversary. Oh, nice. Okay, yes, red. that's that is very nice. Um, I think I have a project page for it on Ravelry, and I also really loved knitting the um, Jujui. Uh, by Hohi Locatelli. It's J-U-J-U-Y. Why not that make it Huey Huey? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. It's either Huhui or Jujui. Because her name is Hohi. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. So Sorry. it's, I did my, that's the one I showed a few episodes back in the mm -hmm. ivory and the kind of pale pink. And so it, it turned out far too um, pretty and dainty. And yeah, and yes, you know, it, it, it almost looks Victorian gorgeous. Gorgeous. for my taste to wear. However, knitting it, I loved Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I may make it again someday in just different colors that would suit me better for something to wear. So, but Perfect. I really enjoyed knitting that. Yeah. And how many projects do you have in your Ravelry queue? Oh, so we don't, I don't have anything to look it up right now. In my queue, I might have about under 20 or around 20, but there, sometimes I just queue something so that I remember how much I want to knit it. Right? Not, I don't go to my queue and say, okay, here's what's next to my queue and I'm going to knit this next. Um, so it's not really, that's probably not a, that's not, doesn't that mean doesn't mean much for me. To me either. Yeah. Okay. So let's go on to the next yeah. one. Okay. We, go ahead. I was going to say my favorites, but that's, there's so many that it's, they mm -hmm. don't count either. Um, what is your favorite weight of yarn to work with? And what is your first knitting project? 
What was your very first? Yeah, I can't remember my first project, so let's skip that one besides those sweaters. Well, I mean, I, I did knit mitts when I was younger. Okay, so what's your favorite weight of yarn to work with? Yeah. I mo okay, most commonly use fingering weight because between socks, shawls, and um, other things. I don't know if it's my favorite. It's just that the projects I've chosen the most happen mm -hmm. to have used that yarn. Um, but recently I've developed a bit of a love for worsted because of the um, just some projects I've done. And so I've actually... You've done a couple of shawls and chunky too, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Well, one was Aaron. Okay. Which, yeah. yeah. That's chunky. Yeah. So I have actually bought quantities. Like usually I'll buy yarn because I'll see a pretty skein. And it's often fingering or sock. Because I know I can always make a sock or combine it with something else to make a, a shawl. But I have actually bought larger quantities now in the same color of some worsted and some DK. Are you going to make a sweater? No, not sweater quantity, but for, for shawls. So I'm actually, I actually bought the yarn knowing that I'm going to make a worsted weight. Um, oh, good job. Shawl with you good know, job. texture or something like that. So, so you're trying something different. So I'm, yeah, I, I normally wouldn't just buy worsted mm -hmm. weight yarn to put in my stash or to have to hang on to. I would buy fingering. Right. So yeah. So it's, I don't know if it's a favorite. It's just that it, it happens that the projects I've knit most. Those are the most portable projects tend to be that weight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have probably two fingerings being one of them. A lot of, again, same thing. I yeah. Socks. Usually, well, I do now again, but, um, socks. I love, I mean, I'm making a fingering sweater. And you so do a lot kinda, of sock weight, like fingering weight hats. I do tons of hats and fingering weight. Yeah. And for sweaters, I love DK or worsted. Just okay. since, yeah. They're faster that Anything way. above that. And I, yeah, I have a hard time with it. I okay. Don't. Mm -hmm. Next question. What is your longest time you have had a half-finished object in hibernation? You go first. I have a blanket that's done in white cotton. Mm. And uh, it's really pretty. And it's got cables in it. And it's got a little bit of lace in it. And it's half done. And it's been in my closet for probably six and a half years. Okay. I rip things out. If I'm not going to finish it, I rip them out. That's, yeah. That's me. I don't. I do, but I don't. Like if I'm, if it's hibernated too long, I usually rip it out. But I really like this blanket and I really have to get off my cutoffs and clean it. Can't okay. finish it. Yeah, that's, that would be nice. It's pretty. I should put a picture up. You'd probably be shocked. From my um, most recent spell of knitting, like in the last few years when I kind of got back into it, probably the um, the envelope <laughs> that I showed on our last episode as a which whip should whip I it. knit, that might be the close to the oldest one that's mm -hmm. in my current pile of whips, but I was digging through some totes of yarn in um, my basement. <laughs> I, I found a baby sweater, probably from when my friends were having kids, I found oh a baby God, sweater I love it. that's partially knit, like a, it's pieced, so a couple of pieces are done, uh -huh. and it's really cute, and it was out of a cotton weight, okay. like a beautiful lilac cotton weight. Um, so I, I pulled it out. I don't know if I'll finish it. Um, I should, cause it's really cute and it's, mm -hmm. it's actually probably about 75% done, but that's, do you have the pattern? That has to be like 15 years. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. <laughs> I have the pattern somewhere. I don't know if it Sorry. was with the yarn, but I kept all my patterns and magazines <laughs> and stuff. So mm -hmm. I could find it. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty old. Okay. So you answered that one. Remember to Remember to speak up more. Okay. What okay. is the largest project you ever knit? <laughs> I did... Did I do a big afghan? No, my mom knit me big afghans. The largest one, and it's... Not, well, does it count if it's not complete? Okay. No, go it's ahead. Not, it's crochet. That crochet mandala. Oh. The mandala exactly. madness, which is crochet, which I started almost a year ago in April. Um, Wowzers. it's not done, but if I knit the entire thing in the worsted weight, it's supposed to be about seven feet in diameter. It's round. So that will be the biggest project. And in terms of, um, effort, like man hours, because it's, it's a lot of color changes and different stitches. And, um, mm -hmm. I, so it's, it's in hibernation. It's like a whole bunch of craziness. It's a big, yeah. It's a whole bunch of craziness all thrown yeah. together. But it's, it was really interesting. So it's just that it's not complete. Um, 
the biggest shawl is the one I'm wearing. So after that, it would be this shawl. And this is Hail Bob by Amba O'Brien, which okay. um, was a mystery knit along last year that I did. And it's, it's massive. So it's a monster. You? Mine would have to be that's the blanket I was telling you about. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's queen size. Yeah. So I have to lay it on the back of the couch and then flip it because <laughs> it's so long now. Wow. So I think that's why it's taking me so long. But other than that, it would have to be that hooded coat. Oh, that, that was really nice. That uh, Shauna took with it to Serbia. And I still have enough to do it again. So you I And you're you're going to do it again. I am going to do it but again. But now that spring is coming, are you going to wait? Or no, still I, might, I might start it. I'll okay. start it whenever. So yeah. I'm just changing colors here. So um, Okay, next question. What is the worst overall bad thing you ever knit? Do you have an answer? Do you know? I knit it and then I ripped it out. Yeah, I, anything that I really didn't like, I would have scrapped. So, yeah, so that's a hard... I knit a sweater. It was out of the um, hand paints by Missy Alpaca mm -hmm. in the Alpaca, the baby Alpaca one. And it was brown, navy, and like a taupey color. Yeah. And it pulled really, really, really badly. And it didn't matter if I changed skeins, if I didn't, it didn't matter if I changed every two ever. It was just, it was horrible. It oh. looked like, and I, again, I don't know if it was my, the way I knit it, but I didn't like it. I, it had to go. So I ripped it out and I think I ended up, I ended up selling the yarn to somebody else. Hmm. Actually I did. And she Tunisian crocheted something with it. And it was amazing because it just, right. Cause it, it was different the answer. way they did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I was just going to, I'll answer, but I was just going to interject talking about pooling because it came up on another podcast I was watching. Yeah. If you ever, if you purchase a yarn and you're not sure how it might turn out for what you're knitting, mm -hmm. if you search for that yarn on Ravelry, mm -hmm. um, and find that colorway and then look under projects made with that colorway, you may get an idea. So I did that once with sock yarn. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I didn't know how it would, if it would stripe or pool yep. or whatever. The only thing is you don't know someone else's gauge might be different. Like if I do a 64 um, stitch sock and you do a 68 or seven, it also you know. depends on where you start yeah. on the yarn, because I know that I've with the Misty Alpaca hand paints, I've done sock heads where I've done more than one and it, yeah. and it, one, it can look like a helix and then the other one looks like perfect stripes Yeah, and it's out of the same ball, same person, same gauge. Same, same stitches, same yeah. everything. So it that's another thing that's kind yeah. of interesting. But it can give you an idea. So if you're thinking, oh, how will this look in a sock? Yep. You can go and search Ravelry projects made with that colorway, mm -hmm. and it'll it'll give you a feel. And I actually changed my mind on a sock class because yep. because of that because I saw a yarn that I thought, no, I don't care for that in a sock. I'm gonna try and remember to bring those just because you'd be when you we see need it, to see. Yeah. That's a good idea for our next yeah. episode. So my answer to that is I wasn't sure I had one, but. Um, Something came to mind. <laughs> yes. I I crocheted. If I can find the pattern, I'll show it on our next episode. I crocheted a blanket. Did it match up? And it was out wrong? of, no, it was out of peach and white sayel. Now, this oh was God. Baycrest sayel that my mom and I had probably bought at the bay, like in Winnipeg in the basement. They used to have a little craft mm -hmm. apartment. And my mom always bought bay sayel for... Um, for mitts and other things like that. Cause it was, it was actually a nice sale and it was a good price point. So she, that she bought that a lot. And I don't know if it was on sale or what happened, but, and I don't know if she bought it or I bought it, but there was this bag, Somebody bought a, like a whole bag colonies. of, and it was peach, which I would never choose peach to knit with. This, this is in the nineties. So, you know, peach, but peach and then white. So what they were, were these peach, um, they almost looked like chrysanthemums. So they were crocheted in the round and it was very lacy. And then you did white around it and you kind of joined as you went. Oh, so yeah, almost yeah, like yeah. a hexapuff. Okay, okay. Yeah. Almost like a hexapuff okay. type thing. But you, I don't think there was sewing. You just sort of kept adding as you went. Something like that. So I probably had the pattern somewhere. But it was peach and white. And it was, it was really awful color-wise. It was a pretty pattern, but the wrong colors. And um, I couldn't bring myself to give it to anyone <laughs> who I knew. So I think it finally, I think I even had it in a craft sale and it didn't sell, of course. I probably, probably could have, couldn't have given it away. So I think it ended up getting, it got donated. I can't give it to anybody I know. No, I couldn't. Like, <laughs> and have them know that, imagine? because people are so polite, right? Like they would actually, oh, thank you. 
And then they'd be thinking, and they'd probably oh drag God, it out every time ugly. it came over, and you'd have to look <laughs> at it. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So <sighs> that it, yeah, I did have an ugly project, and I. That's how that was. Yeah, that that's my memory of my ugly project. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and you know, one other thing that sayal was really nice for mitts, but in that blanket, it. It was awful. It wasn't nice either. No. So for that reason too, it would have been awful to feel. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. <laughs> okay. What is your favorite kind of project to make? A sock, sweater, shawl? Okay. For me, shawls. No, really? <laughs> I wasn't figuring me for a shawl. <laughs> shawls. Because I can, I can wear them. Um, sweaters, because of my plus size, sweaters would take a lot of yarn. And I'm really uncertain about how they would fit because I've never knit a sweater for mm -hmm. me. So to invest that much time and money um, in making one, I'm, I'm just a little shy about doing that. So a shawl, I can, it's versatile. I can, I know it'll fit. I can wear it different they ways. They always fit, right? They always fit. I like shoes. <laughs> yeah. You can take them on and off, right? If, if you're premenopausal like me and you get hot flashes, <laughs> You can take it off or put it back on when you get cold. You can bring it along with you to a restaurant in case the air conditioning is jacked up. So, shawls, hands down, okay. shawls. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Mine would have to be sweaters. Yeah, you do sweaters. A lot of sweaters. I do quite a few sweaters. Um, uh, when Not my daughter, just for you, for your no, daughter. When my daughter was younger, I was a sweater fiend. She always had sweaters and she'd have little skirts mm -hmm. to match her sweaters and that type of thing. Um, I still am doing more sweaters for myself. This one's for my mom. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Other than that, I, I usually do. have mitts or socks in a bag started to work on when I'm, they're always in my purse. So if I'm waiting oh, yeah. for anything. Yeah. Yeah. I like to always have socks on the go as well. Mm -hmm. Cause you can, again, they're portable and you can just pick it up and knit you. If it's a vanilla sock, right? You can knit it yeah. anywhere. So always good to have some of those on your needles. Apparently a colorful scarf works well too. This is pretty good other than changing colors. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, next question. I did it. <laughs> okay. Um, I cut out a little bit of technical difficulty there. So she left me in charge of the technical stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What kind of fiber do you like to work with? What kind of fiber? You answer first this time. I have to answer first? I okay. Think I, it first last um, time. I like natural fiber. I pretty much am solely natural fiber. Um, they call me a yarn snob, but well, I don't, I mean, okay. Yarn, I don't, I don't really know what exactly yarn snob means unless it, like to me, it's not like you only knit with cashmere or silk, no, right? No. You like natural I fiber. Mean, part of the reason but. is I, I'm a bit of a tree hugger. Okay. Right. Like I yeah. don't like the thought of acrylic that it's always going to be there and it's, mm -hmm. yeah. So I like the natural fiber. I whether it was wool, I knit with wool a lot. Superwash Merino is my best friend. <laughs> it's nice and, too. And you like, you like um, non-superwash wool a I lot do. more than I do. I do. I, ha I like, I don't, I don't, shouldn't say I don't mind. I like um, working with Shetland. She doesn't. Um, I do like that for certain things. I don't mind working with Cascade or mm -hmm. Patton's Classic. I, yeah. I don't, I like the rustic. I'm not really one into um, alpaca unless it's for a shawl or mittens or something because mm -hmm. I just find that it doesn't keep its shape. For a, for a, a garment, sweater, it can be too garment. sloppy. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's in a blend. So I like something, kinda, yeah. that's probably why it goes with the stuff I knit, right? Yeah, like, you know so, a lot of sweaters, so yeah. you need a super wash. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, yeah, I love super wash merino. Mm -hmm. I like alpaca, but... Uh, again, same thing. It would depend yep. on what I'm getting because 100% alpaca can feel amazing, mm -hmm. especially if it's like the softer yep. um, grades. But um, I mean, everybody loves a little or cashmere. a blend. <laughs> oh, of course. But I mean, the my favorite, and if you watch us, you know my favorite, the um, Manos del Uruguay mm -hmm. Alegria sock yarn. I I still would swear it has cashmere in it. It is so, so soft. soft. I love yeah. it. So I like feel. I don't mind acrylic. I do use acrylic. Um, now more for if I'm getting for other people who I just know yes. aren't accustomed to looking after wool. And I don't want to give them a gift and then say, oh, by the way, you here's a wash. Bible of how to take care of it. And, you know, it's, it's 
and have them not want to wear it because they're going to think I don't want to risk damaging this or I don't ever want to have to wash it. So um, I still do use acrylic and, and use it for for other knits, but for myself and especially for things I'm, I'm going to wear, um, mm -hmm. probably Superwash Merino is what I what I buy the most. Yep. Yep. I mean, I would well, never... Even, like when it comes to gifts and stuff for other people, I usually, wash super, I usually buy Superwash Merino yeah. and tell them just don't put it in the dryer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a couple of cherished skeins in my stash that have, I have some 100% silk and um, they're, they're beautiful, but I don't have budget to buy those all the time. And um, it's like know, me and my I'll, lonely skin. Yeah. Give me it. <laughs> but if I see a really good sale on something and find something that I like, I won't buy something just because it's on sale and it's silk. But if there was something I truly loved and I could get a good deal on it, then that's when I would spend the money because I know I'd be at least acquiring a nicer mm -hmm. um, yarn for and not, not have to spend as much as usual. So, yeah. Okay, good. Well, that answers the next one. Are you a self-proclaimed yarn snob? I don't not think really so. Not really a yarn snob. I just, I'm all natural Maybe material. You're a yarn snob, but you just have a preference for natural, natural fiber. fiber. Yeah. Um, and if anyone thinks that natural fiber is you know, far more expensive than acrylic? Absolutely not. So you can get like Cascade 220 worsted mm -hmm. is is like 10 or $11, probably most yarn shops um, for a skein. Yeah. So, it, and, and you can get acrylic wool blends. Like our local yarn shop has acrylic wool blends of worsted. Um, Cascade Pacific is one. That one's uh, half and half. Half, right? half and half. And it's very, it's like eight eight $8 to $9 for a ball so um it's not about you know you can't afford wool it's just if you're it's a making preference because make, there are yeah. some actual acrylics that feel nice and absolutely and, and acrylics nice, have come and along some of them are expensive like even yeah. on you know oh, some yeah. of the other man like the that one you bought remember that and it had sparkle in it and you bought it at the japanese cultural center and it had yep. sparkle that was pretty expensive and it, it was nice. It felt really nice. It was really pretty, but it was man-made. Mm -hmm. So I... Yep. Yeah, that's it. It is rayon. Right? It's rayon. But that's what I'm saying, yeah. right? Like yeah. I, I wouldn't have purchased it because it's, it's, it's not just, natural, but um, it was beautiful. Buy the fiber that will give you the result you want. Mm -hmm. That's all. I mean, it's... Yeah. And acrylics have come a long way from the Baycrest mm -hmm. sale oh, that I made. The, or the Fentex. Horrible. Remember when that used to squeak? They still sell Fentex. I, you you can still that? find I it. I saw that at Michael's. <laughs> I was like... Ah! But if you, hey, if you're, okay. if you're making slippers that you're going to wear constantly, know, right? they will last. <laughs> okay. What is your dream knitting or fiber festival to attend? I've been thinking about this one recently. Okay. So I would like to go to, um, Vogue Knitting Live. Yeah. That would be fun. In specifically in a certain city or, um, just go to one. Just go to one. I'm not really specific. Specific? Particular? Particular on which city, but I think that it would be fun, no so, matter what city. I think so, too. Like, Vogue Knitting Live mm -hmm. in New York is always in January. Yep. But other ones move around. Yep. So they're not always in the same location. Rhinebeck would be fun. Rhinebeck would be fun. I don't know that I'm in a hurry to get there this year. No. Like, a, some someday. I'm going to Scotland. <laughs> yeah, she has a vacation, a family vacation. Blow the budget. <laughs> um... The one that I wouldn't mind going to is um, the one that's, there's, is it Stitches Midwest that's usually, oh, usually Chicago? Chicago. Because it's, we can easily get there without paying airfare. That's why. So it's, um, I don't have the added cost of airfare. And, mm -hmm. you know, going to these big shows, if you've got to spend all the travel and accommodation money, then mm -hmm. you have a lot less budget for um, souvenirs. So. Yarn. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. those would be the ones. Okay. Okay. What is the oldest yarn in your stash? I have, it was a pack of 10 balls. I know it's, it's wool. I can't remember if it's superwash or not. It's a natural, like off white yeah. color that I got from my friend's neighbor's yard sale. And I probably bought it. 15 to 18 years ago and I don't know how old it was from her so it's not like oh, it's nice. ancient yarn it's just that that has been in my stash for a long time and I haven't made anything with it but it's wool and I got it for a song and I'm keeping it and I'll do something with it so I, I mean I'm not counting the totes full of acrylic and the you know half yeah. used baby stuff that I've had for 20 years but for 
stash yarn. Yeah, that's for the oldest. I purchased all this cotton to make a baby blanket, like to make a full size blanket, but I made it into a baby blanket instead. Mm -hmm. It's like one of those Deborah, Deborah Abrams with like um, different textures, and some of them have beads and anyways yeah so is it I did know. you keep it no i gave it to a friend oh i was gonna say and, i'd love uh, to see it yeah so i made it into a baby blanket instead of the full size so i have okay. all the leftovers. leftovers yeah you could do a cotton scarf i could actually a very large cotton scarf because even though summer is warm mm -hmm. there are there are nights in july like we've been at baseball yep. in like i have a down blanket we have a crazy that i bring to baseball down filled it's the wind here. Yeah. You get the yeah. wind off the lake. Like there's times I'm in a coat and mitt. I can't even knit because it's still cold on my hands in July, like seven o'clock at night in July. Mm -hmm. So we do get cold weather. And so you could do a cotton scarf. That'd be fun. You or you could, could do still whatever you want. Cotton. You could still wear cotton one in the winter. You could. Um, are you gift? Are you a gifty knitter or selfish knitter? Selfish. I've knit the most things for me. I mm -hmm. want to knit more for me. I do gift knit. Like I did a lot recently, but that's just because it was Christmas and yeah. me, 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 me. <laughs> well, I mean, it's only right. I yeah. get it. So I, I'd say I'm more of a selfish knitter. Um, mine's changed recently. Yeah. Because I used to knit for my daughter constantly, 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 but she was getting to be um, more and more particular and I couldn't keep up with the, what she wanted. So yeah. Yeah. So she, I, decided to knit for more for myself or for more adults because I don't really have any kids to knit for besides her. Um, this one I'm doing for my mom because she just finds it overwhelming. So I bought her the yarn last year for Christmas and gave it to her because she started knitting again. Mm -hmm. But she didn't do it so tough. She gave it back to me this Christmas and told me for Christmas I could knit it for her. <laughs> Actually, no, I offered to. So yeah, yeah, she was happy with that. Okay. What do you like to watch or listen to when you're knitting? Lately, knitting podcasts. Podcasts. Right? Because I'm knitting, so it's just Same kind thing. of... Yeah. And because it's a lot of talking, mm -hmm. um, you can look away, look at your knitting, look at a pattern. Yeah. Whereas if you're watching a TV show, um, you know, I, I have to pay a lot more attention because my husband has a cow. If I say, you know, what happened? What did I miss? What did he just do? Which I do a lot if I'm knitting. And then he's like, why are you knitting? So... Yeah, I or or I listen to music Love or it. an audio podcast, but mostly it's it would be watching podcasts. Yeah, mine would be podcasts or TV because I don't really look at my knitting um, unless it's something you can, technical. Yeah, uh, or I'm at a sporting event because my daughter. Oh, that right? too. Like my daughter plays soccer in the summer. Yeah. She does swimming. Um, I can't do it at Taekwondo because I'm doing it. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're right. Stuff like that. I, I end up doing a lot of it. Or if you're waiting for her to pick her, you know, pick her up or whatever, and you're waiting in the car, well, I always have. Yeah. And TV shows that I like are usually the kind that you can knit and look away occasionally. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, but if I'm watching TV with my husband, who likes a lot more action and things mm -hmm. like that, then I have to pay, you know, it's things you have to pay attention to. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Do you prefer wood or metal needles? We just talked about this yesterday. Yeah, I would say wood. Well, both of the interchangeable sets I have are wood. And my mm -hmm. favorite DPNs are the Knitter's Pride Cubics wood. Yep. Um, I don't mind neat, uh, metal. I just have, have more wood. But I, I, I probably prefer wood more. Yeah. Um, I'm not exclusive one or the other. Me yeah. neither. I don't really have a preference. Kind of depends what you're knitting, right? Like certain fiber... Sometimes it's just, it it, it, um, it flows better on a certain needle. Yeah. I think it depends on what you get used to. Mm -hmm. I have a ton of Addies at home. Mm -hmm. They're still, I still love using them. Mm -hmm. um, I love using my Harmonies. I love using my, how do we say it? Lu Luca? Luca. Luca needles. And yeah. <laughs> so about that, I mean, it's all, everyone says it how you say it. And I don't think it matters. But I watched the YouTube, there's some YouTube videos on, yeah. on people who are actually Norwegian or whatever mm -hmm. and that say how to say it. So it's kind of a lukka, like almost Luka. like look and yuk, but lukka. But I was in a yarn shop asking about them and they were calling them likeies. And so mm -hmm. yeah, we all we all know, no, no matter no. how you say it, everyone knows exactly what you're talking about. 
Oh, this is a good one. Okay. Is there a pattern or project you have knit more than once? Well, she gets her phone. Sorry. Um, yes, I have knit close to you twice. One for me, one for a gift. I've knit twin them twice. One for me, one for a gift. Um, Your socks. Socks. Of, well, vanilla socks. No. Does that count no, as a pattern? No. The other ones, your yoga socks. Oh, my yoga socks. Oh, my gosh. I've done... Seven? Eight? No, five, six, seven, eight. Like, I think nine pair of those. There you go. <laughs> That's true. Good <laughs> one. Yeah. No problem. For myself, though, like, if it if it's... Depends on the pattern. So, for well, example... For example, I've done, what? Probably 10, 12 sock heads. Sock head hats, right? Oh, and the Wellington the, work sock shawl. The, yes. Well, but they weren't all for you. That was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I did those. Yeah. But the works, like the works, uh, sorry, the sock head hat, if it's beautiful yarn, I will just do I a sock go. head hat because it looks so nice. Go. <laughs> you want to say hi? Come here. This is my old cat who can't. Come here. Well, go then. Should I stay or should I go now? Yeah. <laughs> this is my old girl, Abby, who has woken up from her daily coma. Yeah. And she's kind of old and can't jump up anymore because her back is not as strong. Well, what are you doing? You want to go? Can you say hi? Say hi. Look at the camera. Hi, that's Abby. She's like, look hey. at all the string. Okay, then go. Bye. No, she's going to stand here and yell at me. Okay. Um, Do you have any other hobbies? Did I answer what was the previous question, though? Have oh, you what, you've knit more than once. once. Yeah. Do we have any other hobbies? Do you? I like to collect yarn and collect patterns. And <laughs> plants. <laughs> oh, yes, my plants. I Who do. likes to grow plants? I have uh, a lot of house plants. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else? I try and be active. My, mm -hmm. You've heard my daughter and I just tested for our green belt in yeah, Taekwondo. Yeah, do Taekwondo. That, that's, yeah. Like hobbies? That's I mean, pretty much it for hobbies. I won't say gardening. Oh, cross-stitch. Okay, so I recently um, revived my love of cross-stitch because of Caroline yep. on the Fiber Friends podcast. She has a floss tube channel. So um, I had gotten rid of all my cross-stitch stuff, as I've mentioned, and now I'm getting back into it. Um... Gar I wouldn't count gardening as a hobby because it's kind of a love-hate. Mm -hmm. So I was never, I didn't have a really a, a much of a yard I could garden in when we lived in Winnipeg. And then when we moved here, and because of the different climate, I discovered... Oh, we have long um, growing time. Yeah. Here. And plus things that will overwinter here that wouldn't overwinter in, no. in Manitoba. So um, my neighbor is a fantastic gardener and introduced me to tropicals. So cannas and mm -hmm. elephant ears. So I think last year I had 10 at least different varieties of cannas mm -hmm. and I dig them up and keep the bulbs and start them in the spring. So in about end of March, um, be. where we're sitting is I have to bring in another table and it's two full tables of bulbs that I start. Yeah, but you do a good job at that. Yeah. And I do that because for myself, but also she does a big plant sale across the street from me on May long weekend. And uh, I help her with her sale and I also sell all my extra bulbs and I get to keep the money from that. So that's, yeah. What is your favorite snack? Whatever's there. <laughs> I don't know if I have a favorite. No. I Are like you salty or sweet? Salty. salty. I like, like salty, savory more yeah. than sweet. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. What is your favorite color? My favorite color? Your favorite color. Okay, well. You have to pick one. Just one. If I have to only pick one, <laughs> just one. It would be like a dark purple, like plum color, like this. Nice. That's pretty. However, cool. like in terms of knitting and yarn, I've really been into the whole aquoise. Yeah. I'm drawn to that too, and that it's was the blues and the purple. And it's you, like. you know what? That's... It's because of well, it's not because of, but in the last four years since moving here, because of the lake. How could you not? When you go over that, that bridge, color, it's so beautiful. The when we colors? decided to move here, and we were looking at Sarnia online and the tourism stuff, and I saw the pictures of the lake. Like I told my husband, okay, I'll move there. So you'll see like this, you know, this kind of turquoise. Aqu aquoise color is um, smattered throughout my house and I would love to steal this mug. So <laughs> I do double check that I have but it. But I really, I, mean. I really love dark purple and gray together, things like that. 
I don't know. I'm not a person who only has one favorite. I don't color. really think I need to answer this one. Gray? Gray. Gray. Okay. Definitely gray. Um, I think we're almost done. I think we're done. No. Oh, almost. I you broke it. closed it. it. <laughs> okay. Well, then, let's just finish it off by saying, um, what what are you planning on starting next? What's when next When I have done this, I think I, I have that custom dyed yarn that I'm definitely doing my next sweater in. And you just picked that up, so we haven't shown it yet? No. Okay. I, but I our next episode, episode, you'll show yeah. it? I, uh, so I have to, I'm kind of in a bit of a conundrum. I'm leaving for Mexico. So I don't want to get into a big project and then right. go. You need something small yeah, and portable so I'll probably to take. take this with me and my, oh, I, they, my whip that everybody's decided that I have to do, I'll take that with me. And maybe. Which one did you? The hat. Yeah. Everybody decided it was, that it was pretty. It was highly outvoted yeah. or so, highly voted yeah. over the So other. I'm going to finish my hat. Then I'll have a hat to wear when I get back. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. But I don't really sign to anything big. You? I want to... Um, I have a lot of whips on the go right now. But next up, I probably will do another shawl. Oh, and I think job. it'll be a heavier. It'll be a worsted or I have the DK. I think it's DK yarn. Right. DK or worsted. So, Good. yeah. Do you have any knitting goals for this year? Is there something you want to knit? Is there something... I want I to... Yes. Okay. And we, we talked about this a little bit no. a couple weeks ago, but... Um, I do want to do a project start to finish continental and it was going to be this. And then I realized this is going to be a really long project and I don't want it to look totally Wonky. crappy. And mm -hmm. as Lisa said, she texted me cause we were going to do it together. And she said, wait a minute, our tension's going to be all out of whack, especially at the beginning. It's cashmere. And it's got, it's cash, like it's MCN. So why are we, um, doing a practice? Yeah. Yeah. I'm agree. Okay. So we did not do it continental. So. Um, but I do want to do a Project Continental. Which may pick a hat or something. Yeah. yeah. And I want to do um, a brioche. Now, I have done a brioche, and I've never shown it. I did a brioche hat that um, I think I got to the point where I have to do decreases at the top of the hat and sort of pop, stop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I realized, I think I was supposed to, I think I used a heavier weight yarn than I was supposed to. And, it's, and, I, and I knit loose, and I didn't know that at yeah. the time. It's, it's a too big. It's a bit too big. And because it's kind of a... Um, a big it was a, hat, it was a like posh a posh style, wasn't it? No, no, it's it's almost a slouchy style, which is okay. yeah. But it it it's heavy because it's also double yarn mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. too big, so it it feels like it's gonna just pull right off my head because it's too loose. Okay. So I want to do that th whole thing over, okay. um, and that you know, I so I have done brioche, but I don't have anything finished that's brioche. Okay. Yeah, those I mean, there's more, but those are two. And um, I think I would like to make a garment for myself, like a top. Of some kind, maybe just tell. a t-shirt for summer, like a light, good. lighter short sleeve top. We'll see. At Very good. Sometime, yeah. You? I would like to do at least six of the things that I already have yarn for. That's ah. my goal for you this have, year. You have like projects kitted I have up. Projects yeah. basically kitted up, but then I get so distracted by the next project. So I need to do six of the projects. Yeah. That's my whole goal. That are kitted up for this year. Well, that's a good goal. Mm -hmm. Wish me too. <laughs> okay, so this kind of wraps it up. So thank you for joining us, and um, I think we'll probably try this again. Maybe. I think if we do this again, we should maybe get put a thread to ask questions, like people. Okay, questions they ahead of ask. time. Ahead of time. So we yeah. can talk about that on our next podcast. Yep. We'll talk about how this went, and mm -hmm. we would put a probably a thread in Ravelry, mm -hmm. or draw from questions that come up on our comments on our YouTube videos. Yeah, and collect questions as well to talk about, and we, we can just talk. We could just chit chat too. Mm -hmm. So it's like a real knit night. It's just that for this first attempt, we thought we haven't done this survey yet and it would give us um, a chance to answer the survey as well as um, give us something to talk about. I think about it also gives you a chance to get to know us. Yeah. So thanks for watching. Um, thanks for knitting with us. And uh, we'll probably be back in another week, week and a half with another episode, hopefully. I know, right? And uh, hopefully we'll have a lot more whips and a few FOs to show. And. Um, if you haven't done so yet, check out our three new cows on in our Ravelry yes. group. Perfect. Yeah. All Thanks right. for joining Thanks. us. Take care. Happy Bye. night.